So looking at example six, we have an application. So find the total resistance in a parallel DC circuit with two branches rated at four ohms and 14 ohms respectively. So again, I'm not the circuit guy. Y'all will probably be more in tune with this and your instructor may show you some stronger formulas than this but this is the traditional formula to start with and then it can be modified with with algebra uh, but since this problem is not so complicated since it only has two branches we could probably just e easily just manipulate this equation so the reciprocal of of total resistance so one over rt is equal to then the sum of the reciprocal of R1 plus the reciprocal of R2. In other words, one over R1 plus one over R2. So to find total resistance, so we have to use the formula. So we have one over RT. And then we have one over R1, which is going to be four ohms, plus then we have one over 14. Now, notice that, you know, total resistance is the unknown. It's a variable, and notice that total resistance cannot be zero because uh, you can't have zero on the denominator of a fraction. And again, zero would not make sense anyway in this problem. So that would be an excluded value, but they don't even ask for that here. So one of the things we can do is multiply by a common multiple. So if we think about the multiples of 4 and 14, so... I'll come up here and write the 4 and 14. So 4 would be like 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. 14 would be 14 and 28. So I got to go a little bit further. So 28 would be the next multiple of 4. So 28 would be a number we could use to get rid of of fractions per se. Now, notice that there's also this RT. So what we need to do to get rid of fractions is we need to multiply by 28 RT, if you will. So that would allow us to get rid of fractions. So if I come over and write this problem over again, one over RT, total resistance there, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 14. One of the things we can do in math is we can multiply both sides by 28RT. And we can multiply this side by 28RT. So when we do the math, notice that the RTs would divide out over here and just leave me 28 times 1, which is going to be um, 28. Over here, the 4 is going to divide into the 28 because how many 4s did it take to get a 28? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 4 is going to go into 27, and then you're going to have an RT left still. So you have a 7RT times a 1 because you're going to bring this through the parentheses. So this is going to leave me a 7RT. And then you're going to multiply the seven, the 28RT to the 1 14th. And how many 14s were in the 28? Well, it took two 14s to get this. So that's going to be a 2RT times a 1. So it's going to be a, a 2RT. So what we end up with, with this in this problem is a 28. And then since these are like terms, you're going to have a, a 9RT. So this allows us to solve for the total resistance. So to get the coefficient to turn into a one, we can divide both sides by a nine. So if we divide both sides by a nine, we're gonna have 28 divided by a nine. So 28 divided by a nine, uh, nine won't go into that evenly. If I do nine into 28, it will go in there three times. 3 times 9 is 27, with the remainder of 1. So it's going to be 3 and 1 ninth. So 
if I'm using fraction notation, the answer, because 28 ninths does not reduce, it, it could be, the answer could be 28 ninths ohms if I want this to be left as a fraction. If I want to change it to a mixed number, it would be three and one ninths ohms. Now, if they want you to turn it into a decimal, then that's when you could bring out your calculator and change it to a decimal and round to the number of decimal places accordingly. So that, that kind of gets you moving into the problem a little bit further. Okay.